Hey guys, welcome back to Velaxi Technologies. My name is J.R. Shankar. In this lecture, we are going to see Jenkins master and slave configuration. To demonstrate this one, we need at least two systems. One is Jenkins master node, another one is slave node. Initially, we are going to set up the environment, then run Java based application on one slave system. Going forward, we are going to configure one more slave system to run Node.js applications. Now, let's see the steps which we need to follow. As I mentioned, initially we need two systems. One is Jenkins server, which I have already installed and configured. If you are not aware how to install Jenkins server, please go and watch my previous video, which is blinking right side corner in the I button at this moment. And we need a slave system. This is a empty system. I haven't configured anything at this moment. Then we need to install Java on slave system. Why? Because to connect with the master Jenkins node, we need to run some Java based commands. For that, we should install Java on slave system. Next, configure slave node under manage nodes of the Jenkins master. By going to the manage Jenkins, we can able to find manage nodes and clouds. There we need to configure. Next thing, we need to download agent.jar on the slave node. Once this configuration is done, we get a agent.jar which we need to run on the slave system. Next, we need to run the Java command to connect with the Jenkins server. If we run it, our node can able to, I mean to say slave node can able to communicate with the master node. Now let's go and see the procedure which I have updated in my GitHub repository. This is my GitHub repository where I have created a Jenkins master and slave configuration documentation. If you need this document, I am going to give this URL in the description of this video. And if we see the prerequisites, we need a Java server and slave server with Java installation. Next thing, to configure our slave system, we need to go to manage Jenkins, manage nodes and clouds, then new node. Here we need to add our node as a permanent. After that, we should fill some information based on the necessity. After that, we are going to get a agent.jar and secret key. These two we need to copy onto agent system and we should execute a Java command. Once we have executed, our slave system can able to communicate with the master. And during this process, I have found few issues, even you may face it. That is, master and slave should be at the same Java version and uh, even Maven also should be in the same version. And in case if we are defining Maven and Java paths in the global tool configuration of the Jenkins server, make sure that you are giving the right paths either from the master or node system. Next, in case of AWS server, we need to make sure that we are using the updated public IP. I will explain about this one while we are adding the slave system. Next, cleanup activity. If it is for test environment, maybe you can stop and terminate the instances. Don't forget, otherwise you will be end up by paying extra bill even though you don't use it. Next thing, I have already set up these two systems. This is the Jenkins server. IP address is it ends with 214. Okay, I have already logged into this system and this is a empty system. So far, I haven't configured any jobs. Next thing is, this is the build server. So far, I haven't installed anything. Let's connect to this build server. Okay, this is my slave system. So we need to install Java over here, right? Before installing Java, we need to check out what is the Java version we have on the master node. Let me grab that. So this is master node IP address. Let's connect to master node as well. All right, I have logged into master node. Let me log into root Java minus version. So we have 11.0.13. So we'll go and check it out. Java minus version. Okay, we don't have Java at all. Now I can install Java in two ways. That is yum install Java or else it is a Amazon Linux system, right? So this is a Amazon Linux system. We can install packages by using Amazon Linux extras install. This is the command to install the packages. Before installing packages, I am going to check it out what and all packages are available for us to install. So list is a command to list out list of the packages which are available. Among this, I am looking for this one. So Java Open JDK. So let me install this one. Amazon Linux Extras install and Open JDK 11. Now let's check the Java version. 
Java minus version. You can see here, this is also 11.0.13, which means that both are having the same Java version. Next thing, we are jumping back onto Jenkins to configure our slave system. For this one, we need to go to manage Jenkins and uh, manage nodes and clouds. Here, we are going to add a new node. Before adding a new node, you can see here built-in node. This is our existing Jenkins server itself adds as a built-in node. Okay. Now, we are creating a new node. Here, I am going to name it as a Java node. Okay. Because I am going to build Java based applications on, on this node. That's the reason I am giving the node name as a Java node. And uh, add it as a permanent agent. Okay. Next thing, we need to provide the description. I just mentioned this node helps to build Java applications. Next, number of executors. How many parallel jobs you can run at a time? By default, it is 1. We can change it to 2. If you need further information about this one, you can just click on question mark over here. It gives the information about the how many maximum jobs we can keep and what do you need to consider while setting up this number. But 2 is fine. Next thing, remote root directory. Whenever we are running Jenkins, we should use the workspace, right, to build our applications. So, by default, our workspace is where lib Jenkins on master node. But in slave node, we don't find this path because we haven't installed Java over there. So, that's the reason you can choose any one of the custom path as a remote root directory so that it will use that as a workspace. So, I'm going to mention slash opt slash opt build okay so i'm going to use this as a our build environment or workspace location in case if this directory doesn't exist while we are executing the command it creates this directory okay next thing labels usually while running our job we are going to choose with the name of label so i'm going to give it as a java build node next thing uses you have two options that is use this node as much as possible only build job with label expression matching this node second option is talking about in case if we are choosing this option whatever jobs are having this label only those jobs are executed in our slave system in case if we are choosing first option whatever having this label those are executed on our node apart from those in case our slave system is sitting idle then jenkins master slave can able to use this node Let's use this as much as possible at this moment. Next launch method, we have three options. If you want to know more details about it, you can just click on question mark. They have explained it detailedly. Anyway, I will quickly explain about this one. First option is talking about we are going to run the commands on our slave system to connect to master system. Second option is to run the commands on the master node to connect to the slave system. Last one is for the Windows agent. So, first one we are going to choose because we want to run the commands on our slave system to connect to the master. Okay. Next, work dir. Work dir is nothing but while we are running any job on our slave system, it generates some logs, right? Or some default files. So, where do you want to store those default files? That is where we need to mention the custom work dir path. If we don't mention any path, by default, it is going to take the slash opt build. Under that one, whatever directory you are mentioning here, that directory getting created. If you don't require logs, you can disable logs by choosing this option so that you don't see this directory is getting created or it is using this path. Okay. But I want to get the logs, so I don't want to disable the work dir. Next thing, we need to use the WebSocket because it connects either with the WebSocket or TCP port. We are going to use the TCP port to connect it. Last thing, availability. So, here we have again three options. That is, keep this agent online as much as possible. Nothing but it is always up and running. Second thing is, bring agent online according to the schedule. Here we can run the cron jobs. According to the cron jobs, agent will come up and agent will go down. And the last thing, bring agent online while in demand. Nothing but whenever we are running any job with the label which we have mentioned over here, at the time it will come up. Once the job is completed, it will go down. But for now, we are going to keep this agent online as much as possible and save it. Alright, we have added our node, I mean to say Java node as a slave system. And you can see here a red cross mark which represents that it is not 
yet activated. Activated nothing but it is not yet communicated with the master node. So to make it communicated with the master node, if we go inside, we'll see what is the issue. You can see here agent Java node. This node helps to build the Java applications. That is the description we have given. We can connect to Jenkins server by using any one of these ways. So first thing is Java web start. By running this file on our client system, we can able to connect or else by executing this command or else by executing this command. Okay. Now let's talk about the third point which I was discussing. In case of the AWS server, make sure that your Jenkins URL should be updated with the latest IP. Here what will happen? We are getting this command, right? You can see the IP address of your Jenkins server. It is matching over here. If it is not matching, you should go to dashboard. Under dashboard, go to manage Jenkins and uh, configure system. In this, what will happen? It will take the default IP address of initial public IP address. You can see here Java location, Java URL could be something else. If I stop and start, this IP address will be same, but our public IP address is going to change. Okay, this IP address is going to change. Then this command may not work. So you need to consider that. Okay, hope you got it. If you have any issues, please comment in the comment section in this video. I will help you. Anyway, now to run this one, we need to download this agent.jar, right? So let me download this one. Go to the file location. This is the file. And I would like to copy this file onto my slave system. Nothing but agent node. This is our agent node, right? So let me clear the screen. To copy any file from Windows system to Linux system, we can use a another application called WinSCP. But if we are using the mobile extern, we can use easily SFTP. Nothing but just to open this one and go to SFTP. And here you can see here, this is slash home slash ec2 minus user path and whatever files are there in the slash home slash etc minus user. Same thing you can see here. Okay. Even we have hidden files as well. Now, we need to copy onto this location, just we need to minimize it and drag and drop this over here. That's it. That's simple it is if we are using the mobile extern. It is loading. Alright, we have copied this file onto our Linux system and uh, let me refresh it. We could be able to see agent.jar over here. If not, even we can find it over here. Anyway, it's taking some time to load. Let me check it out over here. Yep, you can see here agent.jar is there. Alright, now we need to execute the command. Let me minimize it. It got disconnected it seems. So, to execute this one, we just need to go to grab this command. You can see here, what does it do? It is running the agent.jar and uh, it is downloading the jpnl file. Okay, this is the jpnl file we need from the Jenkins master node itself. In case this IP address is not working or not correct to the existing current IP address, then you may end up with the problem. And work DIR, we haven't mentioned anything. That's the reason by default it has taken slash opt build. And I will show you what is there in the slash opt build. cd slash opt. And you can see here there is no build option at all. Now whenever we run it, it is going to create a build. Okay. So let me execute this command. Sorry, I need to copy our jar file over here. So mv slash home slash ec2 minus user to sorry agent dot jar to slash opt. Okay, now let's run this command. All right, you can see here we could able to communicate with the master node. I mean to say connected, and now I will go back over here and let me go to java node now yes now agent is connected but it will be in the foreground let me cancel it and run it as a background so again run it with and symbol now it is going to run in the background all right so which means that we could able to communicate or enable the master and slave configuration successfully to test it out what do we do we are going to create a simple jenkins job that is demo job Okay, so let it be a freestyle project and uh, we are going to execute a shell commands. So execute shell and here I am going to mention it as a uptime. Whenever we execute uptime, by default it is going to run on our master node. 
and also we are going to execute workspace okay both commands we are running that is echo workspace first one is uptime but by default it is going to run on the master node but i want to run on the slave node right so that is where we can use the restrict where this project can run so i'm just mentioning what is the label we have given you so java you can see here java built node we got it right so java built node i'm uh, looking so this is the java built node and apply and save it okay now we are trying to identify workspace of our jenkins slave system as well as the uptime before executing this one let me search for uptime of our build server this is 54 minutes and jenkins master node uptime you can see here 23 hours all right now let's go and uh, execute it build now all right you can see here uptime is 54 minutes and uh, workspace you can see slash opt build workspace and demo job and if i go to my agent system and ls now you can see a new directory called build has been created go inside to this and if we look we can see that remoting and workspace has been created go to workspace we could see our job okay so that is demo job this is how we can use our agent system to run the jobs. In next lecture, I am going to show you how to run Java based application on our slave system. That's all for this lecture. If you like this video, please give you a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider to subscribe our channel. And if you feel that this video is helpful for your family or friends or colleagues, request you to share with them. Thank you so much and uh, see you in the next video.